Hello guys. If you want to watch this sports, follow the link in the description below. Thanks enjoy your time. Hello guys. If you want to watch this sports, follow the link in the description below. Thanks enjoy your time. Hello guys. If you want to watch this sports, follow the link in the description below. Thanks enjoy your time. Hello guys. If you want to watch this sports, follow the link in the description below. Thanks enjoy your time. Hello guys. If you want to watch this sports, follow the link in the description below. Thanks enjoy your time. What's going on and gets to his gets to his hot receiver to see him going out to the flat. You see the pressure that's going to be coming here. That's good understanding that Josh McCown has of the protection, knowing that he doesn't have anybody picking those bodies up and he knows where to go with the ball quickly. Cleveland Browns dead last in the NFL a season ago today. Three out of three on third down. Looking at a third and two. Pulled it down twice. Now on the move and throws sideline, and it's complete. Inside the 25. Diving for the 20-yard line is Gary Barnage, the tight end, and that's another Cleveland first down. Good poise and presence by McCown once again. The Jets only rush four, drop seven into coverage. They're able to get some initial pressure on him as he flushes through the pocket, keeping his eyes up the field. I don't know if people necessarily would have thought that was the matchup you, you would go to with Barnage there, but Barnage does a nice job of stopping on the sideline and bringing in the first down. First down from the 21-yard line. This is Drone, Sean Drone, for about three. The word from the Cleveland sideline is linebacker Scott Solomon has suffered an ankle injury. Uh, and for more, let's go down to Jamie. Well, that's exactly what I was going to say, Greg. We saw him carted off. The team doesn't want to say much more, but his return is questionable to this game. Thank you, Jamie. Second and six. This is usually the part of the field where teams like to take a shot to the end zone. The closer you get to the end zone, things are kind of restricted down there. So now you got a little bit of space. You're going to take a shot. This is an area a lot of teams like to do. Well, nothing doing on the left side. Lee J. Doosable was early on that snap, jumping, jumping the count. Penalty marker down on the far side of the field. All side. Defense, number 78. Five-yard penalty. Replay, second down. So Lee J. Doosable is the guilty party. See Doosable right there. He's the one coming on the early, anticipating the snap count. Level just raises naturally. The level of everybody goes up, and the quality of the volleyball is just incredible. And you see a whole new appreciation for the game and what these guys can do and what they're having to do to compete these are the matches where the level of the teams and the individuals increases it's invaluable experience that you can't buy oh yes and we've got two exponents of the pipe two teams that Arguably are the best exponents of it. Lucas goes up with Smith, and then Leal's got no chance as Russell delivers straight through the middle of court. Oh, yes, again, Russell hustling. Getting that ball away to position one. He 
the USA now have edged in front here Smith with the serve well played Lucarelli in a match like this you've got to figure that both coaches will have told their players it's important we play well it's important to get the win and if it means we do it in five we do it in five unlikely that either one of them have said yeah i expect us to win this three nothing it's possible but it's going to be close for a three nothing we expect the scores to be around 23 mark maybe a few 24s in the club equally if the team gets ahead and gets away it's anderson belts that one right over the top of lucas we could see a bit of a, a seesaw, like a 25-15, 18-25, 25-20, 18-19, 25, and then we go to the decider. It all depends on how the teams attack this and how they deliver. And also, as we see that belter from Anderson. It was just brutal this year for Coach Sarovsky and Maryland going out of conference, play a number of ranked teams, and then having to contend with the Big Ten. Pro looking to turn, instead lays it off to Williamson. One more touch for Ian Murphy, with three goals in his first four starts. Yeah, speaking about that schedule for Coach Sarovsky, he did that intentionally. Felt like this was a group that needed to be tested throughout the season. And they sure have been able to put together a pretty good run for a form here to close out the season. Wright has been involved quite a bit here in the early going. Pines up to the task once again. The composure from him to find the outlet pass and not just boot it up the field. Paul Bin on the ball for Maryland. He's a great story. We'll get more into him as we get into the broadcast. But great to see him out on the field and contributing to this Maryland side that's looking for yet another appearance in the NCAA quarterfinals. One on one on the far side. That ball is played through the middle, just about over the penalty spot. DeRosa bangs that one off of Brandon Williamson, and it'll be a throw in for Maryland just about 10 minutes into this one. Yeah, much better for Maryland. Good attacking play, switching sides of the field, and ends up with a shot from DeRosa. I thought he should have hit it first time, but elected to take a touch. Not Williamson to get a block in. DeRosa looking to serve that oh. one across Matias Frick. <laughs> Inches away. You hear the whole crowd there go, whoa. Yeah, I think everybody <laughs> took a deep breath that's wearing blue here in Koskinen Stadium. Nearly handball. Issa Rayan, flag stays down. But the ball played well in front of the Duke forward. Samuel is on the ball. He's a lot like Jack Doran. He's asked to do a little bit of everything for Coach Sarovsky. He's played so many different positions. Left back, right back, left center back, right center back. He's played all of the different defensive positions. Now a holding midfielder. And Yelly Proke inside the 18-yard box. Looking to play that one across. Rayanne was making the far post run, but the ball never got to him. That's a good point you bring up about Samuels. He has played every position and not complained one bit. Just a total team guy, a glue guy. He just wants to be on the field and see if he can play a big role in making this team go to the Final Four. It's interesting. This is one of the first Maryland teams in about 15 or 20 years that hasn't been to a Final Four. This group of seniors. Hey, back when you were playing, it was just part of the schedule, right? It was just kind of a rite of passage. <laughs> you guys just scheduled, uh, I would say, the plane flight, but you didn't travel very much in the NCAA tournament either. Yeah, but even going back to the days of Taylor Twelman and Danny Califf in 1998, I mean, every senior class made it. McKenna sends that one into a dangerous place. Hines is there one more time. Mention how comfortable Duke's back line is on the ball again. McKenna converted midfielder Aiden Stanley, more of a wing back naturally, so he's comfortable on the ball as well. And in the early signs of this game, Duke's doing a great job. Their back three has pretty much bottled up Elney and Ben. I don't know if he called Elney's name yeah. more than maybe once. He's got to figure out a way to get him the ball. I mean, he's playing that center forward in that three front. And they got to find a way to get him involved in this game. Otherwise, it's too easy on Aiden Stanley and those Duke defenders. Doran. Now back to Williamson. 
McKenna now plays a ball into Daniele Proke. 11 goals on the season. And you see Pines just doing the deal as a center back, stepping up, winning the ball, outlet passes. He's definitely got a future at the next level for me. Maybe one touch too many that time for Hervé. William James Hervé, the freshman. Big Ten all-freshman team. Zorowski says sometimes there can be a bit too much flair to his game. Says at, at times it works to his benefit, but at others it's maybe one touch too many, perhaps an instance there. Would have been better served to lay it off. Instead it's Matthias Frick on the near side. 